Welcome to this tutorial for V2 of the Feed Scroll Generator for Autodesk Inventor. In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating this simple shaft we see in AutoCAD, uh, where we have a circular bottle profile. We don't have any bottle rotation as the bottle's circular anyway. We don't have any movement of the bottle inboard or outboard of the sh uh, compared to the shaft axis. We do have a change of bottle pitch from the start pitch of 44 millimeters to the end pitch of 60 millimeters. But other than that, this is about as straightforward as a shaft you'd be likely to want to create with the app. So let's head into Inventor and see how this works. We'll walk through the whole process, including a simulation of the created shaft at the end. So I'm going to hit the Generate button here uh, in the Inventor ribbon. And we, this is the default shaft that uh, ships with the, with the app. Uh, and we're just going to enter our values in here. Um, these are the, the general shaft uh, va values we can enter in. This is variable bottle distance from center values, which is not applicable in this case. And bottle rotation values, which again is not applicable in this case. So we're really just focusing up here uh, in this tutorial. So let's head back to AutoCAD and just check some numbers. So the length of the shaft is 610 and the diameter of the shaft is 80 millimeters. So that's nice and easy. Let's enter that in here. And we get a pre the updated preview of the shaft uh, in front of us as we are entering these numbers. So we can enter any numbers in for the OD here. It happened to already be at 80 millimeters, so that's fine. Um, I do want the uh, position of the bottle inboard and outboard to be 80 millimeters, but you see here we can change that. We can move the bottle inboard or outboard. Um, so there it's at 50 millimeters. Let's move it back to 80. And uh, as regards the other dimensions, let's head back to AutoCAD. We've got um, a start pitch of 44 and an end pitch of 60. So let's head back here, start pitch of 44 millimeters. See the preview updates if you're watching closely. There's 60 millimeters. We can see the total number of rotations of the shaft to get the bottle um, from start to finish here as well. We've got nearly 12 shaft rotations uh, involved here. And for these lead in and uh, lead out values here, let's head back to our AutoCAD drawing. Um, it looks as if the bottle pitch is changing pretty much. It starts increasing pretty much straight after the bottle enters the shaft there. So we're going to have a lead-in value of zero, but we want the pitch to have reached 60 millimeters by the time the bottle is 370 millimeters from the end of the shaft, before the end of the shaft. So let's enter these values in here. We can put a value of zero for the lead-in and the lead out is going to be 370. We don't need to reverse the shaft rotation and we're pretty much ready to go except for the crucial bottle shape here. So we're just gonna hit edit bottle shape down here and we're gonna just enter the inventor sketch that defines this. We can use all our inventor sketching skills to enter any bottle shape we want. So let's just draw a circle in this case. Check out the other tutorials for some more interesting and challenging bottle shapes but we're keeping it really simple for this first tutorial. Uh, the bottle size is 44 mil from the AutoCAD drawing. I finish the sketch, I hit accept, and I hit generate again, and yes and yes allows the bottle to be automatically rebuilt in the preview here with the new circular shape. So we've got the option at this point, before we hit the smooth build button, we do have the option to check um, to sanity check really the, uh, the inputs that we've put in here uh, you're doing a preview build before we do that you've got um, different settings for accuracy of the preview build so let's just head to options and just check we probably want this set to be as low as possible um, in order to get the fastest preview effectively we can also leave this fastest processing box ticks um, and with that let's hit the preview build button and this is going to give us some blocky geometry output rather than the smooth G2 continuous geometry we, we expect with this button. But it's really nice and easy to check that you have actually created something that makes sense. So we get a nice quick preview in eight seconds there. It looks sensible enough. If I want to see the movement of the bottles, I can hit simulate here. We can do this with a preview build. 
or we can do it with a um, uh, with a smooth build as well. Um, let's see. Just give a name to this shaft, and it's going to build a simulation for me in an assembly file. And if you're familiar with version one of the app, v1 of the app, you'll see some changes in here that I want to talk about as well in v2 of the app. So we've got We've still got a slider that allows us to move back and forth, but this time instead of just two bottles, we've got all the bottles appearing uh, as we drag the uh, drag the shaft, you know, uh, from start to finish, and we can see the movement of the bottles as we go along, which is nice to be able to visualise the whole way along. But also some extra improvements are the ability to view the data um, in a slightly more sensible way in here and we can view the data inside here so we can see the position along the shaft of each bottle in millimeters how far away from the center of the shaft it is we're not varying that in this example so it stays at 40 millimeters the rotation of the shaft none of the bottles are rotating so they're all zero um, the pitch between the bottles so we can see it finishes at 60 um, if i want to scroll the shaft back a bit if i collapse it scroll the shaft back a bit here and view it again I can see at the start we do have a bottle pitch of 44 although the first one's already started increasing there as it's moved along the shaft um, and this one's quite useful the physical clearance between the bottles so initially we should have zero physical clearance let's just move the bottle just a slightly bit further back there um, if I view that here so we've got zero physical clearance between the bottles at the start and at the end we've got 16 millimeters might not seem like much but if you've got bottles twisting as they move along the shaft and also maybe going inboard and outboard of the shaft um, as uh, um, as well as a strangely shaped bottle that isn't circular the ability to quickly check the physical clearance between the bottles might come in in handy here you know i can hit inspect and hit measure with the standard inventor tool um, and I can see that we do in fact have a clearance of 16 millimeters between those two bottles and these two bottles is 8.68 millimeters which is equates to that number there so that's a, a helpful quick way of doing that if we want to copy this data um, into an Excel spreadsheet we can just hit this copy button and then I can open an Excel spreadsheet for instance and I can just hit control V to paste that in um, and expand these uh, these columns for instance so we can see what's going on and there's my data if I want to use that um, in a inventor drawing or in any other um, scenario and we can export uh, as many different versions of that we want as we want see here we've got five bottles we can see uh, the data for those five bottles in this case so we've got some other options here that we can we can hit. Let's just save these for when we've built a smooth shaft in a minute. We'll come back to these. For now, we're just going to return back to the uh, to the part file. So we're exiting the simulation. We're happy with the results. If not, we could change some numbers and do a, another preview build. But we're going to hit generate again. And because we're happy, we're going to hit smooth build here. But before we do. This is the important setting here. How accurate do we want this shaft to be? Well, we get a choice of how much construction geometry we use to create it. You see here, if I have the slider right in the middle, I'm, I'm creating a construction grid at 3.65 millimeter intervals. So for a circular bottle, that's maybe that's enough. If the bottle shape is really um, strange, uh, you know, it's, it's very different from circular if it's uh, hexagonal or something like that. We might want a finer grid in order to be able to very closely approximate it with the lofts that we're going to create with the app in a minute. But for simple circular or elliptical, a very smooth geometry, you know, uh, a, a looser grid is generally, a coarser grid is generally suitable. And this is how many grid lines it's going to create um, in each case. So, we, you know, we'll set it to... Uh, a reasonable accuracy here um, just so it will be reasonably quick to generate um, and then the other important setting is the bottle complexity so this is how many lofts we need as we go along the shaft from start to finish to in actually to actually create the geometry so in, for a very uh, 
unusual shaped bottle um, you'll need a lot of lofts in order for inventor for the surfaces not to become wrinkled uh, for inventor to be able to handle it comfortably but for a circular bottle um, we can have that as very low we can only just have a few surfaces to replicate it so you know that's about as low as we can go about 30 37 40 surfaces uh, as we go along the shaft um, and we're all ready to go now so I'm going to hit smooth build and uh, it's first going to check the the root of the bottle and then it's going to calculate the vectors and now we can see it's actually processing the uh, the smooth geometry um, as it goes through so this is the kind of speed that it's going to generate the the shaft at lots and lots of points to calculate you see we're about sort of 13 percent done now um, at sort of two-thirds highest accuracy so what we advise at this point um, is that if you you know if you've got other work to do in inventor if you want to create more shafts then i can easily start another session of inventor now and carry on working um, while this session runs and if you've got a uh, quad core machine or well, dual core, quad core, eight core machine, um, then you'll be able to do that without any performance impact. As Inventor will only really use one core for for these calculations. Okay, so we're just about to start actually lofting the curves with the app, um, and you can see we're now creating the lofted surfaces. You can actually see the construction geometry that's being used, and you can see that. The, uh, the rails used for the loft um, the loft are actually quite coarse you know you can see each rail there if we were to have the accuracy very high it would be a very fine mesh you can um, create a mesh a, a grid um, of you know fractions of a millimeter here so I'll speed up this video and uh, then we'll see what we can do once the shafts created Okay, so here we have it, this shaft created in uh, what looks like just under four minutes uh, to, to reasonable accuracy. So I'm going to say OK to that and let's take a look at it. So it's, it's proper solid geometry in Inventor. First thing we might want to do is to check the smoothness of the surfaces. So the app will always use um, G2 continuous uh, splines to create these lofts. Um, obviously you can make the app's job easier by using actually G2 continuous geometry for the bottle shape if you have to put fillets on there um, but in this case it's about as smooth as it's possible to be with a circle so we expect perfect results effectively um, let's just take a look at uh, a zebra analysis perhaps for this so let's hit inspect and start a zebra analysis with you know, some sensible settings and let's just hit OK this allows us to check the reflections off of the surfaces and if we see any uh, anything that's not continuous here, any sharp lines, then that's typically a problem. This looks pretty good. Um, we can't really see any discontinuous uh, lines here in the analysis. So uh, let's turn that analysis off. And the next thing we might want to do is to run a simulation of it. So let's head back to the simulate button and we've got to save the part file first again and it's going to generate another simulation but this time we'll have a couple of options that we didn't have available before so um, I can move this around by the way when I'm, I'm simulating it I can rotate in 3D if I want but uh, typically you would probably want it to be um, in, in 2D uh, well, in a plan view so let's um, let's move this slider around and check the movements the same as before as expected we can view our data the same as before as expected but we've now got these 2d silhouette and 3d interference buttons so if i hit the 2d silhouette button what that does for me this is the same in v1 of the app is it will take the current position of this simulation and it will export a snapshot of that to a dxf file that can be opened in AutoCAD so it's simple example 3 clearance check 0 so let's just here's my DXF file let's just open that in AutoCAD and we can see 
you know, a, a little title here of the current shaft rotation. But here we have the bottle um, geometry exported. The main purpose of this, I'm sure you can think of other reasons, but the main purpose of this is to do a check in 2D of how close it fits. It doesn't seem to fit that well initially, but if we check our AutoCAD options for how smooth we want the circles and the arcs to appear, if I set this to 20,000, that's looking a little bit better. And let's zoom in. Let's see here. So we can see that we do actually, if we zoom in very close, we do have, let's select this bottle shape. So selected, we do have a very slight interference there. So it's only very, very small, but that's because we put, uh, we didn't put the highest level of accuracy um, on the shaft. Now, um, if we return back to Inventor, I'll explain what we can do about this. So the, the app will always produce a, a, a very small interference, maybe infinitesimally small uh, if you use the highest accuracy. This is just due to the way the surfaces are constructed. Um, However, what we can do to counteract that is to put the a clearance on the shape of the bottle itself. So if we wanted a 0.1 mil clearance or a 0.5 mil clearance around the bottle, we just sketch a bottle shape that is 0.5 mil bigger than, or one mil big on the diameter than it would um, than the actual real bottle shape. So that's easily taken care of. Um, but the other tool we've got in here is a 3D our 3D interference tool, which I just hit the button there as I was talking because it, uh, we're using here the standard inventor interference checking tool in an assembly and it's calculating the interferences because this is complex geometry. Um, you can maybe hear the fan on my computer running. It takes a minute or two to calculate. I shouldn't really have had so many bottles visible here. I really only needed one <laughs> or two bottles visible. Um, so it'll take a minute to run. Uh, and when it does that, I'll be able to check the um, interference between the bottles in cubic millimeters, as you can with the standard interference command in Inventor. So um, as I'm asking an awful lot of it to do it with so many bottles and, and this complex geometry, I'm going to pause this video while Inventor carries on thinking about this. And then I'll show you the results in a second. OK, Inventor's all done with the uh, calculations. My fan is calming down. Everything's back to normal. If I want to check the total interference, I've got 11 interferences uh, with a total of about 18 cubic millimetres. So each interference between the bottle and the shaft is about, I guess, um, 1.2, 1.3 cubic millimetres. If I want to zoom in on one or two of those, Let's see, there's the interferences. If we take a look at this, the actual thickness of that interference is pretty small, as you can see. It's a very thin little slice there. Um, so by modeling in a very small clearance in the shape of the bottle itself, maybe, you know, certainly 0.1 of a mil um, or more, even with this medium accuracy, we'd be able to get zero uh, clash between the bottles and the shaft. Uh, so I'm going to say OK. By the way, we can zoom into any clash here by double-clicking on the interference here if you're using Inventor 2016, I believe, or later. Um, so I'm going to say OK here. So that was the 3D interference button, which is another way of checking the geometry. Uh, here's an, here's a, um, uh, an addition in V2 of the app that we're talking about now. This is the option to actually bake the simulation in the current position and save it off as an assembly that we might want to use in a in another inventor layout assembly or production line assembly or something like that we can actually save it off whereas previously we had no other option but to return to the original simulation part file so if i want to bake this simulation in the current position i can just hit this button here and uh, it gives me a message informing me what's about to go on and it will save off the parts in the current position. So this is now an inventor assembly file with grounded bottles. I can treat it like any other assembly file, save it, assemble it into another assembly uh, and produce another, another version of it if I want as well. So let's, uh, let's just head back to the original part file, which is this one here. 
and we've successfully built our first simple shaft with the feed scroll generator. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed this.